welcome to epg patrashala i am dr t s ravishankar former director epigraphy archaeological survey of india mysore the subject is indian culture paper indian epigraphy module brahmi early middle late brahmi and indian scripts abroad the main objective is to understand the brahmi script its regional variations over the period of time and derivatives because brahmi was mainly responsible at later stages it led to the progression of um, siddhamatrika kutila and uh, later sharda and other scripts early nagari and other scripts we have it has been classified into three categories early medieval and late brahmi and their evolution in course of time and its characteristic features in different parts of india to know the indian scripts employed in the inscriptions from neighboring countries and southeast asia as you all aware epigraphy forms one of the major primary source to understand especially our early indian history and earlier scholars they were looking for the political history and now in the course of time they shifted their attention even they tried to tap the epigraphical sources to understand the cultural history social significance economic administrative many aspects especially this is a module connected with the early inscriptions brahmi there are large number of inscriptions available from 3rd century bc to 6th century ad and later also brahmi has a long history of evolution starting from 3rd century bc to 12th century and here we are confining up to 6th century and a little more attention will be given to say something about the derivatives from brahmi as i said like siddhamatrika kutila subsequently sharada proto bengali early nagari and other scripts brahmi script is considered as the mother of all the scripts of subsequent period and it was a pan indian script used throughout the length and breadth of the country all early inscriptions beginning from 3rd century bc to 6th century are written in brahmi script classified for our convenience as early middle and late brahmi and they fall in the time brackets from 3rd century bc to 1st century ad it is called early brahmi from 2nd century ad to 4th century ad it is middle brahmi and subsequently from 5th century to 6th century ad it is late brahmi from late brahmi onwards there is a progression towards the kutila script sometimes it is also called early nagari and it developed into other scripts first of all was we come to know from brahmi a set of large number of ashokan rock edicts found throughout length and breadth of the country exceptionally from not from tamil nadu and kerala otherwise it is found throughout the indian subcontinent apart from these ashokan rock edicts we have a few inscriptions reported from different parts of northern india like mahasthan piprawa saugara and other inscriptions mauryan brahmi as we have seen though it has a lot of regional variations it is called imperial script or mauryan brahmi and this is very very important further a stage is set for its uh, evolution from the end of the christian era early brahmi characters are very simple nature as you know it is of geometrical nature uh, with a stri with a square circle and vertical stroke it's very very simple subsequently it evolved into different forms early brahmi inscriptions range from 3rd century bc to 2nd century bc are written in prakrit language it was the lingua franca though sanskrit was our there ashoka in his edicts mainly popularly employed prakrit inscription so that even a common man could understand the significance of his message in the right perspective so that's how prakrit became the lingua franca and most of the earlier inscriptions they are written in prakrit language 
like Bhatti Parolu, even the early Satavana inscriptions, even in the south, any part of the country, earlier inscription we find in Prakrit language, it continued as a major language uh, till 3rd century and in south, the Pallavas, they continued for till uh, 4th century AD onwards. And subsequently, the Sanskrit emerged as one of the major languages and by the end of the 1st century BC and during Gupta period, it emerged as one of the major languages and it continued for many, many centuries, not only in northern India, even in south India, many of the major dynasties, they, along with the regional language, they continued to use Sanskrit language as one of the important till medieval, late medieval period and subsequent period also. Prakrit, as we said above, it continued 2nd century in the north and lasted in the south India till 4th century AD. As I mentioned, the Pallavas, for their early copper plate charters, they used Prakrit as a main language. As we observed earlier, the, though the inscriptions are found almost all most part of the India, with all regional variations, and uh, the Ashokan edicts are called the imperial script because uh, one major royal charter was there and he carried all the messages throughout the Indian subcontinent. Two important features we notice in the realm of writing because with the dismemberment of the Mauryan Empire and the emergence of the native states and the Sals, Satraps and all, they brought it along with them uh, a different media to express their uh, language. The emergence of native states with the disintegration of the Mauryan Empire after Ashoka, they used this script on their coins. Not only in the inscription, we have biscriptal coins and the inscription. And some foreign powers who are confined to northwestern parts of India, the erstwhile Mauryan Empire also used this inscription on their coins. And this is how it felicitated, it rather facilitated uh, at later point to discover, to decipher Brahmi inscriptions because of the bi bilingual nature. And Professor Dani has tried to identify different regions based on the different variations in the script. He has tried to uh, locate, identify based on the main characteristics of the letters, he has identified different centers regional centers being Eastern India with its main center at Magadha which formed the nucleus and it stood for the Eastern variety. Eastern India with its center at Magadha. In the Northwest we have the center at Taxila and Mathura and Northwestern Deccan and South India. These are the four regions he has tried to identify and categorize them according to the uh, scripts available in different regions. We may notice that in the first century BC, there is an acceleration, there is a development uh, in the way of writing. During this century, the knowledge of writing was diffused among the people. During the earlier phase, during the Mauryan period, perhaps a few section of people were aware of the script, but in the course of time, uh, they became aware the art of writing, the Brahmi script, so whenever they went to different regions, they tried to record their donations, their gift uh, by way of uh, taking the message of their visit to different places. During the century, the knowledge of writing was diffused among the different people and during the Mauryan period, the art of writing of Ashokan Brahmi was confined to a small group of scribes. When the Mauryan Empire got dismembered, some private authorities started using the script. More and more people came to know about this art of writing and they became interested in it. That's how we find by the end of the Christian era and the first century AD, we find large number of inscriptions, especially which are of donative nature. A major paradigm shift takes place by the end of the first century BC, that is the Kshatrapas. They introduced a new technique altogether as you know, all earlier during the Mauryan phase, a simple tool was used to engrave their edicts or the inscriptions. But subsequently, 
during the Mathura Chhatrapas, they all together brought a new technique which is called pen technique and it altered the ways, the forms of the letter which is very well seen. The above you see there um, the Rumindi pillar inscription, very beautifully inscription where and below you see the other Mathura inscription with the pen technique, how the, they have equalized the letters and lengthened the verticals and head marks are seen which are all very very important features which will be seen in the uh, subsequent slides. And this is very important aspect. You are seeing above the Mauryan inscription and the Shodasha Mathura inscription which have a distinct uh, letters all together and individual letters got uh, attention and they formed different letters all together. Mainly the features here, the head marks started appearing. You find the nail head marks and the thick block head marks and these are, Dani has classified them into three categories and this is how you find in the further course of the evolution, these marks have become important and this is one of the very, very important aspect uh, from the earlier Maurya Brahmi and with the passage of time, how head mark become a very important significant feature in the formation of the letter is seen in course of this one. And another very important aspect which we have to remember in mind and keep is focused is the verticals. Earlier the letters were of the same length and in the subsequent period they lengthened the vertical stroke sometime giving a gentle curve and lengthening you see and head mark also mostly seen on the left side. Here you see on the letter A how the uh, small head mark is seen and the vertical stroke is lengthened and the curve is there. Similarly the letter Ka you find the head mark and the horizontal stroke and is taken slightly above and a curve is seen. And similarly the Ra is also elongated with a small gentle curve. And the another very significant aspect is angularization of curved bottom. Earlier you have seen almost all the Mauryan Brahmi characters are of the cursive nature. And predominantly you see in the later phase they become angularized. The letter Ma, here the lower limb you see that it is of cursive nature and subsequently you find letter ma with uh, angularity and similarly the letter ka where the appendage you see is a small circle but subsequently you find the triangular mark is appended that becomes ka and similarly wa is of uh, roundish type but whereas in the subsequent field it gets angularized you find this and the tendency to equalize the verticals this is another aspect to be kept in mind. Gha you see here with the cursiveness whereas in the second phase you find they become angularized or, and then pa you find the left limb the vertical is longish but whereas the second phase you find it is equalized. And similarly the la, ra, sa is of uh, cursive type and it becomes angularized with a head mark slightly seen above the uh, limb and la and ha. These are the cursive and subsequently how it become angularized. This is one important aspect. And then the medial vowels. It has a very important role and earlier we find during the Ashokan or Mauryan Brahmi a slim simple dash is attached to the vowel signs or the consonants. But here you find it is slightly slanting. K, a ka, a, like that. When strokes are become slantish, is so how it led to further changes you see in the subsequent period. What we have seen is different. Now you are seeing in a different fashion the vowel markings, especially you are seeing here. Now similarly, as far as E sign is concerned, 
E and E become rounded, sometimes ornamental. You find here key is written with almost a rounded form and similarly lengthening also you see in a different way. So you see a distinct shape what you saw in the earlier Mauryan phase and you see subsequent phase in the Kshatrapa, Kushan and other records. And medial U is attached here below the vertical stroke. Similarly, Ku, Pu, you see the bend. Earlier, simple dash were attached below, but here it is slanting. And this gave altogether a different forms in the course of its Brahmi's progression when in the further centuries. Another re-medial sign assumes a curved form here and subsequently you see the when you attach the O sign I, Ba, Pau this is how the medial strokes are attached to gain the I, O and O phonetic sound. So after the Mauryan phase we are coming to the another very important phase in the paleographical studies that is with the emergence of the Kushana they brought in some more changes because to introduce when the Sanskrit language became a prominent uh, language they had to introduce some more uh, sounds to suit the phonetic value. The last quarter of the first century AD the Kushana empire made its presence felt in northern India and we find a large number of inscriptions started appearing in different parts of northern India. Under their patronage, large number of inscriptions were written in Brahmi, not only that, but even in Karoshti, but it was confined to Pakistan and the other northwestern region. By this time, the script had become more popular. As I mentioned earlier, after the dismemberment of the Mauryan Empire and with the emergence of the principal um, in other uh, dynasties, they were becoming more and more aware of the script and you find uh, people not only that they became interested and they started their donations given gifts to the various religious places. Other important factors in the acceleration or in the evolutionary process these uh, important uh, factors may be kept in mind. The desire for swiftness in writing which gave rise to cursive forms. For example, there are some inscriptions, the desire for ornamentation, when the, which paved the way for the new shapes, which you find in the Vijayagad inscription, inscription from Jagayapeta, Nagarjuna Konda. The desire led to the symmetry in lines. Earlier, no symmetry was there, and subsequently, they meticulously, the scribes took a lot of interest to give individual attention to the different forms of the letter and not only that the maintained alignment in writing the inscriptions along with that with a sufficient phase they also give space room for adding flourishes in the letter forms and medial signs. Another factor which we see is the individual habits and the mannerisms likes and dislikes methods of forming every letter so these are the many other contributory factors which brought in changes in the form of letters. So with these tendencies in places like we find in Sanchi, Mathura, Kaushambi, Saranath, Shavasti and many other places, they became important centers of writing. As we have identified earlier, they are the places with large number of inscriptions with their own distinctness. So that's how they could be classified and they have, they have proved to be the important places. Now the Brahmi, in the earlier, as you know, there are no regional variations. But subsequent paleographers, when they could see a large number of inscriptions coming from different directions, they try to notice changes in the formation of letters. Now the Brahmi script that is found, they try to classify east and west. That is, Mathura became the center for the western style, the Kaushambi led to the eastern region. Even though the differences in these two schools were limited to a few letters, but the distinction is clear. 
So it's not necessary the entirety, they not be changed. But certain letters, you definitely see a distinct forms appearing, which will be seen in future, this one. So the Yisru style, we have the centers at Kaushambi, Sahet Mahet and Saranath. In the Yisru style, you may predominantly see the head mark is not to be seen, but tapering verticals. This is a very, very important characteristic feature of the inscriptions which are seen in the Eastern style. They lack head mark. But you find, on the other hand, a long tapering vertical without head mark. So it, it recalls the style of Mathura Kshatrapas. Just we have seen above how the verticals were extended, of course, with a very slight head mark appearing above. And in the Kushara inscriptions of the above, mentioned as medieval vowels are seen as in the Mathura style. The western style of the inscription, earlier we have seen the eastern style and what are the important aspects connected with the western style, we may just see. The western style of the inscription mostly found from Mathura, but this style was also found from Sanchi and eastern Malwa region. The Shakak Shatrapas, as we have seen above, introduced a system of writing with the tapering verticals which further developed during the period of the Kushanas. And the medial eye is simplified and Anuswara is shown with a short line. You find with the two dots vertically arranged and another stroke is added. That's how a change is taking place instead of the three dots which you have seen in the earlier Mauryan phase there is a slight departure from the earlier method of marking. Some letters which had vowel appendages have now a triangular base such as Kha, Ma, Va, which you have seen above. How earlier letters we had this uh, circle or cursive appendages become angularized in the case of Kha, Ma, Va and Na. Na and Na, they have their bases bent earlier in the Mauryan Brahmi they were just a horizontal line, but in the subsequent period you find the lower line, the lower base line is bent, is shown, and it gains further momentum during the subsequent period. Now, let us see during the Gupta period how Brahmi underwent. There are certain important centers are noticed here or recognized here. In the North Indian style, had its sound center at Kaushambi. This is occasionally been called the Middle Ganga Valley or Kaushambi style. And Eastern Indian style, we have Bengal and Bihar. And in the Western style, we have it Mathura. Malwa style, predominantly having the slight box-ended character we see in the Madhya Pradesh, that is Central India. And this later, led to the further uh, progression you find during the Vakatakas. So in the uh, central India, the Malwa style, you find mainly the head mark. And further, the Gujarat area also produced their own distinct style. So during the Gupta period, you find a lot of changes taking place. In addition to this, we have, uh, um, as you know, along with our tradition, culture, uh, the Indian script travelled abroad and we have a large number of inscriptions reported from not only from Sri Lanka, Burma and other places but from uh, the Southeast Asia, we have Cambodia, there are inscriptions from Sri Lanka and all. So as I said, along with our tradition, religion and culture, the script also travelled beyond seas. When we look into the earlier history of the countries like Ceylon and Burma, and Southeast Asian countries is replete with the impact of Indian culture and tradition. The Sri Lanka, Ceylon, because of the maritime activities, it all started with the business, the merchant started moving. So initially it was a trade business and subsequently they carried along with them the literature, the script with them. The maritime activities were so intense and active there was a great interaction between different neighbors, one such country is Sri Lanka. The earliest inscriptions of Sri Lanka 
I mean, compared with Ashok and Brahmi, all the earlier inscriptions are like that. When we compare the inscriptions of both the countries, Indian styles change from time to time with new technical advances, whereas the older forms tended to survive in Sri Lanka. So in Indian context it changed, but in Sri Lanka it remained. Another country is Myanmar, Burma. The early styles of writing in Burma can be categorized into three groups, which have great resemblance with Indian style of writing. And as we know, countries of Southeast Asia lie on the route of Eastern commerce and trade, and there is a constant maritime activities resulted. As you know, it was a greater India. Now we have been separated. We call Pakistan, Dhaka, Burma and other in the historical period. It was one big country. It was greater India. Uh, nothing but you see all the Indian tradition, culture. It was reflected in wholesome, full manner in those countries. So during the 4th and 5th century was a pan-Indian script and Sanskrit became a major language. And that you are seen in the inscriptions from Cambodia, Java, Sumatra and Bo Borneo and many other countries of South India, uh, Southeast Asia, you have a large number of Sanskrit inscriptions. And we especially see the influence of Kadamba, Pallava writing on many of the inscriptions of Southeast Asia. This clearly shows the richness of our culture, tradition, language and script which traveled far and wide. Now the evolution of Brahmi script from, you may just see in the beginning, they have been classified into three, six different uh, phases. The first is the Mauryan phase, where you see the vowel A is shown with a vertical stroke and arms on either side. And the, sometime the upper arm will be cursive and the lower arm will be angular. Sometimes the lower will be cursive, the upper will be angular. And in the Shungan phase, you find there is a gap in between the curve. The upper is angular and the lower again is the cursive. And the Kushan phase, you find a small head mark is seen on the left limb of the letter and the Kshatrapa also and the Gupta altogether, little changes you see. And the Vakataka phase, another you see the box being attached to the left side of the limb. And similarly the A, you find in the middle of the left side the vertical, a stroke is attached and this is seen in all the cases and even with the Vakataka also. The vowel E, we find changes from the Kushan where you see apart from the dots, you find the two dots arranged one below the other and another vertical stroke is added to the side. And the total change you see during the Vakataka where a cursive form is shown with the two dots at the end. And vowel U is uh, similar in all the phases except in the Gupta you find little cursiveness and during the Vakata period you find box attached to the left side. Please students always remember the box will be attached to the left side of the limb of the letter. And another letter is A. This is very simple and the change you notice only during the Vakataka period. Now coming to the consonants. Earlier it was a simple vertical stroke with a horizontal line running across and you find change during the Kshatrapa where, where the head mark is seen and the, not only that they extend the lower vertical, it is also called a dagger variety because this is there. And the Gupta form you have seen and the Vakataka period, a box is added on the top of the vertical. And the Kha is uh, with a stroke and you find the changes coming in the course of time. And the letter Ga, almost on the subsequent period, the left limb will be shorter. They kept on elong elong elongating the right side stroke. And Ga is also more or less same. And the Cha, you find the notice changes. It is also called the beaked variety when it comes to the Gupta phase. And Cha, Ja, these are the other forms 
Next, we will see the another consonants. Ja, ta, these, there are certain consonants which have not undergone any change over the period of time, right from 3rd century BC. Only you find changes on the 7th century. Those are the letters are called ta and tha. And da you find some changes. Dha and na also you find the lower base which I explained earlier. The lower base gets slightly bent. And altogether a different form you see during the Gupta period. Open mouth and na it is called. And uh, a different variety altogether during the Vakataka phase. And the tha during the Mauryan phase it was angular. And subsequently during Shatrapa period, it becomes cursive and the right left limb being shorter and the right is extended. So this is a prominent feature. As far as Tha is concerned, there is no change. Dha is, uh, you may see, Na, Pa. Ma, and during Mauryan phase, Ba is a simple squarish form. And in the subsequent period, like Shatrapa, you find a small dent is seen on the left side of the limb and more prominently seen in the Vakataka period. Bha is arm chaired Bha and a sudden change, departure take place uh, in the Shatrapa phase where not only head mark appears but it is slightly cursive. And the Bha is like Taurine symbol, it's a uh, cursive variety, but it changes during uh, Kshunga. Both the forms are available, the angular as well as cursive form. And uh, during Gupta period, Ma is written, it is called a tiled Ma. There is a sudden change, the lower limb is compressed and a horizontal lies in form. And during the Vakata period, the lower limb gets shifted to the left side and a box is attached to the left side of the limb. Similarly, the tripartite ya, which we see in the Mauryan Empire, Mauryan alphabet, and it changes. You see in the Kushana period, the left curve becomes gently curved is shown, and uh, during the Gupta period also you find the head mark appearing, and the box is attached on the left side during the Vakara period. Ra as a whole, you know, there is no much change. They appear in two forms. One is in serpentine form, Another is a vertical stroke. La also, you find during the Mauryan period, it was, you find the right limb being extended. But during the subsequent period, as per the, this one, the, they become equalized. Va and the Sha, you may see that uh, Shankara Sha, uh, just like arrowhead it appears. And during the subsequent period, like Kushan, it becomes a horseshoe type where a horizontal line is running across, it is attaching both the limbs. And another stroke you find during the Kushana phase, Sha and this other thing. Sha is a Shanmukha Sha. The next one what you see is Sha. And uh, during the Kushana phase you find uh, the horizontal stroke slightly bent connecting both the limbs. And during the Kshatrapa phase, it, a short dash you see above and the sa, dental sa, how it was during the Mauryan phase and you may see the Gupta phase, a looped sa is formed and during the Vakatak period, a box is attached and ha is the another form which you see and how it was during the Mauryan phase, Shunga, Kushan, Shatrapa and uh, Gupta and Vakataka. This is broad outlines of different forms, the evolutionary process which has taken place during this 3rd century BC to 4th or 5th century are shown in this chart. So here are very few select inscriptions are shown and this is the very famous Rimindi pillar inscription. It reads like Devanam Piena Pedesina Lajina Visati Vasavisitena Ata na agacha mahiyate hida buddha jate sakya muniite sila vigada bhikacha ahite sila thave cha 
ಉಸಪಾಪಿತೆ ಹಿದ ಭಗವತ ಜಾತಿತೆ ಲುಂಬಿನಿ ಗಾಮೆ ಉಬಲಿಕೆ ಕಟೆ ಅಥ ಭಾಗಿಯೇ ಚ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಆರ್ ಎ ವೆಲ್ ಪಾಲಿಶ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ ದೋ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ಕಾಪಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ನಿಗಾಲಿ ಸಾಗರ್ ಪಿಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಲ್ಕತ್ತಾ ಬೈರಾಟ್ ರಾಕ್ ಎಡಿಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಶೋಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಹಗೋರ ಆಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಬಿ ಸಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅದರ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ರಾಕ್ ಎಡಿಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಲೈಟ್ ವನ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸಹಗೋರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಸೀನ್ ಅಬೌವ್ ಮಥುರಾ ಸೋ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೋಡಾಸ ವಿಚ್ ಮೇನ್ಲಿ ಶೋಸ್ ದಿ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಚರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಮೌರ್ಯನ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಹೌ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪೆನ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ ಯು ಸಿ ದಿ ಲೆಟರ್ಸ್ ಚೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕುಶಾಲ ಪಿರಿಯಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಕುಶಾಲ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆರ್ ಶೋನ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಗುಪ್ತ ಪಿರಿಯಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಉದಯಗಿರಿ ಕೇವ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಂದ್ರಗುಪ್ತ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ರೆಗ್ನಲ್ ಇಯರ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಉದಯಗಿರಿ ಕೇವ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಂದ್ರಗುಪ್ತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬನ್ನಸೋರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ರರ್ವರ್ಮನ್ ದ ಕೃತ ಇಯರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕರಮದಂಡ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕುಮಾರ ಗುಪ್ತ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಅಲಹಾಬಾದ್ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಗುಪ್ತ ಸೊ ದಸ್ ಯು ಕುಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಎ ಗ್ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಮೈಲ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಟು ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಸಮರೈಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಎಪಿಗ್ರಾಫಿಕಲ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೋ ಔಟ್ ದಿ ಲೆಂತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರತ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಮೇನ್ಲಿ ಎನ್ಗ್ರೇವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಾಮಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ದೋ ದ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಖರೋಷ್ಟಿ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಮೇಜರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ಎವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಎ ಡಿ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ನೋಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೆನ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕ್ರಿಶ್ಚಿಯನ್ ಎರಾ ಬೈ ದಿ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಪ ಸಂಬೋಧರ ಎ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಡೈಮ್ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಾಮಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಲೋಕಲ್ ರೂಲರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ವೇರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅಪಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಕುಶಾನ ಪಿರಿಯಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ವೆರೈಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸೀನ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಕ್ವೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಈಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ವೆರೈಟೀಸ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಕ್ವೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಗುಪ್ತ ಪಿರಿಯಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ವೆರೈಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸೀನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ಗ್ರೇವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಾಮಿ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ದ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಲೇಟ್ ಬ್ರಾಮಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ಟು ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕಾ ಬರ್ಮಾ ಜಾವಾ ಸುಮಾತ್ರ ಕಾಂಬೋಡಿ